Alrighty, well, good morning, everybody, and once again, it's cast time. Um, let me go ahead and, uh, let me go ahead and intro this music real quick. And this is, uh, uh, Ab, Abstraction, uh, Ignis, Natura, <laughs> Renovator, Integra. Um, no idea what all this means, but, uh, this is an album, I believe it came from Argentina, if I'm guessing right, so. It's a little bit across the pond here. Um. Let me go ahead and go ahead and get that going. Oh, and uh, before I, before I get started, let me. I this wasn't my first choice. Um, there was like a there was some dungeon synth music that came up, but uh, it, they were all a little too heavy on the synth, less on the dungeony. So it's like it was like freaking prog rock, you know, where they just go full ham on the synthesizer and all that. So I just it just wasn't into it at all. Um. Trying to think. I didn't find any. I didn't find any copyrighted work, so that's kind of good. There was um. There was another one though I was considering. Um, I played this kind of music in my cast before. It's called uh Iron Cthulhu Apocalypse. The channel. Um, they decided to go ahead and do like a like an eight-hour greatest hits album, for lack of a better word. But uh, I was considering it, but. I went ahead and decided against it. Um, no, wait, let me rewind back a bit. I was going to use that music, but then uh, this Abstract Aeon came, album came up. So, did a copyright check on it. It checked out, so I'm going to go ahead and play this instead. I don't... With these cast videos, I don't like repeating myself. Or I don't... I try to avoid playing the same album if I can help it. So... something else here real quick oh and um and yeah uh, the background the background noise is gonna be a bit louder um I had a I think I might have said this in uh, one of my one of my earlier casts but uh my uh, box fan in my bedroom no oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no the uh, I have kind of a for my computer I have what's called a I call it a, a red a redneck heat sink. I got a big box fan right next to my computer, my computer tower. Um, uh, cause it used to have a glass panel in there, but whenever I whenever I touch that glass panel it feels a bit warm. So I figure there's gotta be something better I can put over there because the uh, apparently my computer com components are getting a little on the hot side. So I put a box fan there instead to kinda get some of that hot air out of there. Well, um, that pan I was using, it it basically blew out, so I had to buy another. I had to buy another box fan and replace it. So this newer one, it's gonna be a bit louder. So so if you're wondering what all the extra background noise is, that's what that is. It's a new and improved fan. So, uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and get her fired up. Uh, but to start with, uh, pretty rough week, despite the fact that I was only working like two days. Uh, still pretty brutal. Um, and again, we got inventory next week. So, given their pension to uh, putting out fires with gasoline, they um, our uh, freight loads have been getting pretty damn big. So, that happened to. So having to do a lot of a lot of extra unnecessary work, you know, when they should be uh, they should be letting our letting our stocks sell down, letting our products sell down, so we don't have so much to count. They're uh, up in the orders instead, you know, packing out the back room and all that. So totally counterproductive. But yeah, it just. Yeah, just got home, um, got home, just plop. Um, I'll probably talk more about this later on, but, uh, the overall, the overall day, it just, I didn't really do a whole lot. Um, just, most just sitting around watching shit. Um, I think I, I think I'd taken a couple naps today as well. 
So I'm guessing I'll make it up for lost sleep. And it's feeling like I need to be up. It's feeling like I need to take a third nap as well. So. But yeah, it's how it usually go. It's how it usually goes at the end of these work weeks. Just shred it up like a dirty shirt and throw it in the trash. However the old saying goes. Need to turn this down a little bit. Okay, that's a little better. Ah, uh, but anyway, um, for the pinball stream, it was pretty typical. Um, FX3 crashed, DX11 arcade crashed, leaving my only option now was uh the DX9 shitball arcade. So. Just the ball is hard as hell to see because you can't brighten it or anything. You can't uh, you can't light it up, for lack of a better phrase. So spending a lot of time trying to track the ball, um, sometimes losing sight of the ball because it's so it's so camouflaged into the table. So I think I played that for about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, but um, one one big surprise though on Shitball Arcade though is uh, I ended up uh, I ended up beating an old high score, and um, in a really strange twist of irony, I don't I totally didn't even notice. I mean I it was just you know just normal table run, just like pretty much a day like any other, you know doing okay. I mean I didn't I don't recall me uh, beating a wizard mode or anything like that or. I didn't recall me like doing super exceptional. It was just, oh, just a normal, normal table run. Um, at the end of the, at the end of the run, though, look at the score. I'm like, what the fuck? How the hell did I get that? Like, you know, yeah, yeah, I just totally didn't expect to beat it. So, big time surprise there. So. I don't know. I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea here. Hold on. Oh, end of the track. All right. Um, but otherwise, Zachariah, more or less the same thing. Oh, and I. Let me kind of rewind back a little bit. The the session overall was actually uh I'd probably say above average. I mean I definitely didn't I didn't royally suck, but uh I it was pretty much a solid performance, despite the fact that uh I have a hard as hell time trying to see the ball. Um Zachariah, I actually did all right on it too. But yeah, just starting to. I kind of, kind of moved up a little bit in the leaderboards and all the tables, so a little bit of improvement. So yeah, despite all the, uh, despite the limitations, still did all right. Um, but um, kind of a, somewhat of a side note. Um, one thing I noticed that might. Because for a while, my uh, FX3 and uh, DX11 weren't crashing. Um, so I'm thinking, I, I want to, I'd call it a, a lucky shutdown. Like, um, usually, before I lay down or go to work, I'll usually actually shut down my computer and actually unplug it. Just so I'm not uh, wasting electricity. Because uh, if the... If you shut down your computer and the, the plugs it's still plugged in, it's technically still running, just on like super low power. So what I what I, so what I've been doing for the longest time is you know when I, when I'm shutting down my computer, I'm actually unplugging it. So 
I'm thinking that this might be, uh, this might be a contributing factor in why, um, on some days, some days, FX3 and DX11 work just fine, and on other days, it doesn't. So, and I, I think I might have said this in one of my other cast videos, but, um, these days, if, uh, if I'm not going to be gone for super long periods, I'll just uh, put the computer to sleep now. Still leave it plugged in and everything. I'm thinking this might be a this might be one of the reasons why. Yeah, why uh, why why uh, FX3 and DX11 they run like normal for like long stretches. Maybe because I got lucky. I, I had again I had a lucky shutdown. Shut down the computer completely. Turn it you know start it back up and then. Everything works just fine, and then when I when I just put the computer to sleep, it still it still maintains the computer still maintains its normal settings. So I'm thinking maybe every time I completely shut down the computer, it kind of it kind of does a reset. You know, it restarts all the apps, it restarts all the uh, settings and stuff like that. That might be what's contributing to. Uh, having these long stretches where where a DX11 and FX3 don't, you know, they crash. But then on some days for long stretches, they actually work. So, I'm wondering if this has to do with me shutting down and putting the computer to sleep and that kind of thing. So, so yeah, it's what I've been doing. Just, like, before I go to work, I'll shut down the computer because I'm going to be gone for, like, 10 hours. So yeah, I'll shut down the computer on those times, but if I'm just gonna be like, if I'm just gonna be like laying down like during the day, like five or so hours, just put it to sleep. Um, on my nights off, I'll probably do the same thing. Just uh, let the computer sleep instead of just completely shutting it down. So yeah. So I'm thinking, I'm, I'm hoping that's I'm hoping that's the reason why. Um, so, but otherwise, after the stream, I pretty much did my usual game medley. Um, uh, did my Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Did it for about an hour or so. Um, then, um, Gems of War, kind of the same thing. I think I played it for about 15 or so minutes, mostly PvP. Um, called it good on that. And then, um, Creatures of Aether... I got as far as maybe maybe one battle but it was uh it was at this time when uh I just started kind of nodding off and just killed it and then just took my uh, one of two naps um took like a one hour nap got one hour nap got back up just basically fucked around all the evening oh aside from me uh putting this cast together you know, getting all the stuff I need and all that. Just, basically just sitting around watching random shit. Um, did that. Lay down for like a, another one hour nap. Then got back up. You know, kept, uh, kept doing more work on this cast video. So, so yeah. And then, um, I tried firing up, uh, fired up a Stacklands. But a kind of the kind of the same thing there too. I, it's oh and I, I kind of did it to do kind of a crash test on it too. I only played it for like a few minutes, but yeah, Stacklands doesn't crash either, so it's it's a uh, safe to use, uh, crash free. And then chances are, um, if I'm so inclined, I might make another video, like the uh, continuation of Stacklands or something, or Stacklands Part Two. And just uh, do a do a video of that. But otherwise, that's that on that. Um, and then one big thing that has been going on for the for uh, the past few days though is uh, um, one of my YouTube recommendations came up came up. Um, it was um. It was a video on a, it was like a documentary on, um, on crime scene cleaners. 
it was uh it was based on it was based on one of my all-time favorite books, Mop Men. Um, inside the world of crime scene cleaners. And it as as the name would as the name would imply, it's it's just that. They uh, you know if you. Okay, I got, I kind of lost track here. Hold on. You know, so if um. You know, say if you're feeling depressed, you grab a shotgun and decide to blow your head off. Well, crime scene cleaners, they'll they're they're the guys that come in. They'll clean up after you. Um, you know, mop up the blood and brains and bone fragments and all that, and you know, fix up your you know, fix up your room good as new. Well, th but this, hang on, I kind of I kind of kind of lost my train of thought here. Oh, and there's something else I forgot. I before I forget to mention again, um, I I think it varies from state to state. I thought it was uh, nationwide, but uh, it what you see in movies is a, is I think it's a myth. Like you know, when you're watching some movie, you know, you come home and you see your you see your loved one laying there on the floor dead, and you go ah. And then it immediately cuts to the funeral scene. Um, that it doesn't really happen that way in real life. Um, what what I kind of mean by that is, uh, you're if you have a dead body in your house, you're on your own as far as uh, as far as cleaning it up. But again, like what most like what you see in all these movies, you know, you don't see that part. You just see it. You go home and you. You see the dead body, and then it switches over to like the funeral or post cleanup and all that. Um, but again, I thought it was nationwide, but I think it varies from state to state. Like in California, if you've got a corpse in your house, you're responsible for cleaning it up. But I, I'm guessing there's um, in other places, in other states, the some governmental body takes care of that for you, like like a a, a crime scene cleaning company or whatever. But what I'm talking about here is the actual company. Like, crime scene cleaners, like there's an actual logo and they have business cards and all that. And, you know, it's over in California. Well, well, I mean, I mean, again, this this uh, documentary I watched, it's, it's, I think his name is Neil Smither. But, um, I forget his name, but, uh, this, this, um, author, writer guy, he follows this guy around as he, as he does these jobs and stuff. Um, but yeah, one thing that really, but one thing that really intrigued me about this documentary is, uh, is man, they racial the fuck out of this thing. Now, kind of a kind of an aside here. Um, I got a, I recently got a browser extension called uh, like YouTube dislikes should return or something like that. But um, I added that on. It's an it's an add-on that shows how many dislikes a video got, which in um, as kind of part and parcel of this, yes, I'm I'm actually pro dislike. I actually like seeing dislikes on somebody's video. I mean it, 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 it and, you know I kind of like I kind of like seeing, I like seeing an approval rating on a video. You know, because a lot of times I could just look at how many dislikes a video has. You can kind of look at the uh, ratio between likes and dislikes, and if it's uh, ratioed really bad, like in the case of this documentary, basically 50%, oh, I won't watch that video immediately, and I'll go on to something else because I already get, I already know, I already know ahead of time that the video is gonna suck. So anyway, getting so getting back to the subject at hand, um, one thing I saw about this is uh. This video got like really racial, like, like 50%, like 50% dislikes. I'm like, holy shit! I mean, I mean, when I read the book, I mean, I already, I already knew that uh, Neil was a pretty, pretty cocky person. Like, <laughs> like he would, uh, he would be at a, he would be at a crime scene, and the corpse would be like covered with maggots, and he would sit here like he called the writer and, hey, hey, dude, check this out, man. Listen to this. <laughs> 
Hear that, man? That's uh, that's maggots, man. They're eating this body, and I know how you love maggots. <laughs> you know, like that. Like he's, like he's a he's a pretty big asshole. But, but yeah, I'm sitting here. Uh, I'm reading all these uh, YouTube comments and what a douchebag he is. Now, I'm definitely not gonna dispute this, because you know they were saying you know he's very, very unprofessional, very unbusinesslike. But um, but you know I'm pretty sure that uh that seeing death, you know, seeing dead bodies, like, like, you know, like what I've been saying, you know, finding a corpse in your apartment or, you know, a corpse in your house or whatever, um, they, it can be pretty traumatic. I mean, not, it's not every day you see something like this, so I classify it as trauma. So it's going to do different things to different people. You know, it's going to change people's mindsets, their philosophies and whatnot. Um, apparently it, it turned this guy into a major asshole. Um, but like I said, I don't, I don't know what he was like before then. Um, I think when I read the book, I think it was his, I want to say his grandfather died. Um, he came home one day and he found his grandpa or his grandfather like laying there dead on the couch. And apparently he's been laying there dead for a while. And he was, he was looking out in his uh, back patio and the sun, you know, the sun shining on him and everything. So it reeked pretty bad. And uh, the, the couch that he was sitting on was soaked with blood and fluids and all that. So, so again, it, you know, it, again, it affects people in different ways. Um, but I, I, somewhere in there, it inspired him to start his own company, Crime Scene Cleaners. So, but yeah, it just. The book was awesome. Like I said, it was one of my all-time... It's one of my all-time favorite books. Um, but uh, watching this documentary, I... Again, I, I'm totally not going to dispute what all the uh, YouTube comments said. Like, what a total jerk this guy is. You know, I totally understandable. But at the same time, too... Um, oh, how can I explain this? I mean, I definitely agree with everybody in saying that, yeah, he's an asshole, but, oh, I mean, I'm I, I thinking inexcusable, but understandable. I mean, given the guy's line of work, you know, maybe he, uh, you know, maybe in his trauma, he discovered something that, in fact, yeah, that's it. The, the, start, of the start of the documentary, he, he said this, he sees things like, I see things that most people don't see. I see things that most people don't want to see. So he's stumbled onto something here. And like, again, he's... I don't, I, I don't want to say he's beyond humanity. But, you know, again, he's... It was, it was also one of the reasons that, uh... Back, back in the day, I was interested in uh, disaster relief. It was one of the reasons why I wanted to... I took a first aid course. Um, my brother-in-law, he uh, he had a... For a while, he had a career in this. Like, whenever uh, a power plant would... Or whenever a nuclear plant would melt down, killing a whole bunch of people, he would go in and do the cleanup. It seemed like a pretty fascinating line of work because you're, you're basically doing something very few people want to do. So I'm going to... I'm going to take another drink here. Hold on. So, you know, but yeah, it was one of the reasons why I, I, I took, a, took a first aid course. Because I wanted to get into this kind of work, the kind of work that my brother-in-law was into. Because he would, he would tell me story, he would tell stories about, you know, um, you know, about a, a plant explosion. You know, and how seeing all these people, you know, sitting in their cars in the parking lots and whatnot, like literally being welded into the seats. Like again, it isn't like what you what you probably see in movies. That's the other thing that I found very interesting. The the, the things these kind of people would find, you ain't gonna see in a movie. You know, you know, you know, some a bunch of people get blown up, boom, and uh, all you see is just a bunch of charred skeletons or something like that. The stuff that he was talking about, it ain't like that. It ain't like what you see in the movies at all. Like you know, I think the way he mentioned one, it was like Han Solo being frozen. You know, being encased in carbon, how he looked—that was how some of these, 
these uh, corpses that you would come across would look. You know, literally being welded to the seats that they were sitting in. You know, having this, oh shit, look on them, look on them as he, uh, you know, like moments before they got caught in the explosion, that kind of thing. It's, you know, these stranger than fiction stories that he would talk about. But, but uh, the thing that impressed me most about it is just, he didn't sound like he was either A, you know, totally scared shitless, or B, like he actually got off on it. He was just telling the story like normal, like a normal storyteller, that kind of thing. But again, but again, it just, trauma affects people in different ways. So it's same with this guy. So kind of going back to what I was saying a few minutes ago, I, you know, I totally get the, uh, I totally get the dislikes, but at the same time too, you got to understand the position he's in. You know, he's dealing with dead people for a living. You know, he's dealing with blood and gore and all that for a living. He's dealing with the stuff that, you know, kind of, you know, I mean, the moment, you know, your moment of trauma when you see your husband with half his head gone because he blew his head off with a shotgun. I mean, your trauma is only momentary compared to the trauma that this guy here has to deal with on a daily basis. So, there's that as well. But, I mean, the YouTube comments, I thought they were too harsh on them. So, you know, so once again, I mean, inexcusable, but understandable. It's just how it comes out. So, but yeah, like I said, this is definitely one of the best documentaries I've seen in a, long, in a while. And then it kind of goes, you know, you know, something else that he was saying too. He said in this book, like, 80% of everybody you meet are scumbags or dirtbags. I mean, some of the stories that he was talking about, I actually could relate to. Um, you know, my, I mean, my grandma died. And aside from everybody, you know, doing, you know, crying and shedding the usual tears at a funeral, it's like they were, they were arguing over the spoils. You know, they're, how do I want to explain it? It's like they're, it's like they're, it's like they're eluding your corpse. You know, they're arguing over who got what, you know. Here, you know, Jenny Bob gets, you know, Jenny Bob gets this. In fact, uh, I have her, uh, I have my grandma's, uh, my grandma's bird clock. I have that. Um, I have her portrait, but that's all I really wanted from her. Um, they were also wanting, wanting to know if, uh, I wanted her cactus plant. Because uh, I gave it to her as a Christmas present some odd years ago. But I'm not a... I'm not a pet person. Sorry if that doesn't make any sense. In this context, I consider plants to be a type of pet. Like, I, I don't do pets. So I... I turned down the cactus plant. But, you know, but that was all I want. You know, I would have been, ha been happy not getting anything. But, but yeah, just... You know, but otherwise, uh, from all my other relatives, a lot of bickering and arguing about who got what. I don't have Man, she doesn't deserve that couch. Hell, she doesn't even come up to see her hardly at all. We always invite her to her birthday parties, but she never shows up. I don't know why she gets the damn couch. Bitch. You know, that kind of thing. So, but yeah, Neil, was, Neil sees this kind of thing. Like, I think in, in his book, he talked about uh, uh, the whole time he was uh, cleaning... Um, I gotta, I gotta loop this, hold on. Album's about to end. Okay, there we go. You know, but he was, you know, he was cleaning up this one corpse, and the whole time, like, um, a few of his relatives, I think there were, uh, either they were outside the house, or at some point, there were, they were within earshot of them, and they were talking about, you know, how much money was in a safe, or, 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 or some, but basically, they were basically wanting to rob him. That's exactly what he was talking about. Like, they were like going through the, like something like they're going through the contents of his safe or something like that. But it's been a long time since I read the book. But I, I you know, I'm totally related to this because again, you know, I mean, when my grandma died, and that's not even counting like my grandfather and any of the other 
relatives that I don't, that I don't know of that died, you know, all the arguing they did about, you know, what they got from them after they passed away. So, but yeah, he was saying he was saying the same thing too. Like he's he's actually cleaned up court. He's actually did cleanups and had their relatives, you know, basically divvying up the loot. Here, oh here, he won't need here. You get this and you get this and we'll give this to him and all that. So, you see, you got to understand where he's coming from too. I mean, you know, how do you, I mean, people, uh, people might all be warm, caring, loving, and friendly towards you now, but imagine what, imagine how they'd act after you died, you know, when you're, basically, you're not around to defend yourself, you know, you, you know, and I've, some of that, you know, some of that stuff I've seen firsthand throughout, throughout my life, again, somebody passes away, and they all start talking about who, you know, who gets what, and, and all that. You know, I, and to be fair, I don't recall hearing any, good, I'm glad he's dead, yeah, or anything like that, but, but who knows, maybe, maybe people are, you know, maybe these people are saying, you know, people are saying that about this corpse that I'm not around to hear, but like I said, it, after reading this book and seeing part of this, you know, seeing this documentary, it wouldn't surprise me a bit. So I guess kind of a recap to this whole thing. Um, yeah, people disliked him. And yeah, he is an asshole. He he does come off as a douchebag, but I guess I guess now that I think about it, you don't you don't have to like him. You just gotta pay him. That's probably how I'd look at it. You know if if somebody in, if somebody in my apartment comp if I saw somebody in my apartment complex. Um, you know, grabbed a nickel-plated pistol and blew their brains out or something like that, and I came across it and getting cleaned up and all that, you know. You kind of get what I'm saying. I mean, you know, I don't have to like the guy. I just got to pay him. Or, let me rephrase it, or the landlady has to pay him. So, so that that's probably what I was trying to say earlier. It is, I mean, you can, you love him, you hate, you can love him or hate him, but you still got to pay him. I mean, he's doing the job that you're, you know, he's doing the job that you don't want to do. So I'm going to, I'm going to take another drink real quick. Oh, I thought this is going to be the end of this segment, but I think I might have more. Yeah, I think that was something else, uh. There was like a, there was like message, some message boards, I can't remember what, um, some odd years ago. Um, some, some kind of, what keeps you alive, or what, what motivates you to stay alive, or what keeps you living, or something like that. I think I put down the fact that I live right next door to a thrift store. You know, most others will say, oh, my wife and kids, or, oh, I just get high off life, or whatever. I think I said... The fact that I have a thrift store right behind where I live. Because I know uh, if I died, I just know that that's what's going to happen. You know, my whole live long 40-something life. And they're going to go through all my contents. And I don't know what I want to do with this stuff. Want to just throw it away? Well, Harry, there's a thrift store right behind the apartment complex. Oh, yeah. We'll just donate all of his stuff to that. Oh, yeah. That's, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. And next thing you know. All of my worldly possessions throughout my life is just going to get donated to that thrift store. So, so yeah, like I said, it just, yeah. I could almost make a whole video on this. So, but, but anyway, <laughs> whoops, there we go. Okay, but anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and call it good here. Um... I, yeah, but yeah, I think I've said all the things that I wanted to say, so I'll just go ahead and call it good. So I just got to get this thing all uploaded and processed and all that good stuff. So, 
but otherwise thanks for tuning in and listening to me everybody i appreciate that i always do and um i should be able to do another one of these tomorrow so yeah uh but until then thanks again for dropping by everybody and i'll see you all next time bye for now